Wild Women of Planet Wongo, the immersive musical sci-fi spoof, opens June 8th at Chicago Chopin Theater. The Huffington Post called this New York hit up close and full frontal fun. Book your trip to Planet Wongo today at planetwongo.com. Spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Man, you'd think people would understand how to do parliamentary procedure there, Brian. <laughs> what they? I mean, all you have to do is go online and they can find the uh, Robert's <clears throat> rules right there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's so frustrating. Yep. Um, Rodrigo, what other frustrating things are we going to run into this week? All of them. Probably <laughs> mostly each other, though. Yes. Oh, hooray. Yeah. Oh. Well, we are frustrating. Mm hmm. All right. Yes, you are. So, man. yes, you are. All right. On everybody critical hit. Up. Yes, everybody, oh. shut up on critical hit. <laughs> Unlikely. So, uh, well, it is an audio podcast. So, <laughs> um, yeah. What did happen last time? Oh, on, on critical, critical hit. hit. On critical hit. Well, God, God's Coraline. got together. Yeah, treaties of war. Corlon broke the Treaty of Worms? That's... Well, I'm kind of wondering if Corlon might not have been the... the, the you know, if Vecna what? had showed up, Vecna could have saved the day. But no. Well, there's True. a lot of people to blame, or gods to blame, but the bottom line is the treaty is broken, and we have to deal with it. Yeah. So now other gods are going to be coming to life, dogs and cats living together. Total chaos. That sounds right. Time's about to end or unravel. And I suppose I got to do something about that. Yep, definitely. <laughs> definitely start machine. research on that. Yep. Plus, we have to go and track down Cthulhu and Apollo and Kales and Nyad and all of these other gods who are sleeping in the corners of the universe. And Pan. I don't know what Pan's the god of. Maybe pizza. Yeah, peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> see no I'm not even going to make a joke about the father of titans because you say it and everybody will giggle inappropriately and I'll just feel dirty but Rodrigo right. gets it yeah no I know okay Corona? yeah I'm right there with you yeah the, the Roman version right. so no, I... um <laughs> On critical hit yes Thank you for that uh, recap. <laughs> Happy to be of service. I'm going to see if I can start outsourcing these. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as you guys uh, mentioned, the uh, Tree of Worms has dissolved and now uh, things are starting to fall apart. Um, the group had been uh, transported back to the cloud uh, Zarina off in uh, Fire Spider Island um, and we're just about to head back. Correct. Um, at which point uh, Captain Otto shouts from the uh, helm uh, Hey Randis, you want to come have a look at this? Uh, okay. I go uh, look. You you go look, and the instruments are going nuts. Oh, uh, uh okay. What uh, what what could be doing this? Uh, give me an Arcana check. Okay, thirty three with a low. All roll. right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, getting a thirty three and a six is pretty good. Um, there there is some. Uh, form of energy that seems to be uh, severely interfering with the solenoid. Uh. Basically, they had started to kick it into gear, and now it's like there's just uh, too much energy, and they're having like it. It's just ramping up too hard. Uh, can we uh, wind it back down? You can. You can try and like give it like a hard stop. Uh, okay. All right, give me another arcana check. Oh boy. Okay. 
37. Yep, that'll do it. Uh, yep, you managed to uh, basically turn the whole ship off and it starts uh, winding down. Okay, uh, I think the uh, first thing we need to do is find the uh, relative uh, location or direction of this energy. See if it's something we can just coast away from or uh, basically just see what uh, kind of situation we're dealing with here. The uh, the captain taps Randos on the shoulder. Uh-huh. Points up. Look up. Okay. Um, there is a point of light, um, not directly above, but above in the sky. And it kind of like, um, expands and kind of not necessarily explodes, but becomes incredibly bright before settling back into a really bright star. Uh, okay. The rest of you see this as well. Did we just find another perfect star? Is that another God what? waking up? That's what I and was then, thinking. Then another one. And then another one. And then another one. Sorry, so um, what is that? Are these gods waking up? Yes. <sighs> these are oh. their cities writing themselves into the firmament. Hmm. Which one's closest? It's hard to tell. They're all really bright. Um, and then another one appears, and then another one appears, until finally there are, I want to say 14. Oh, man. <sighs> Should we just head up? I do not like the idea of going to God's domain without any information on who or what they are. Agreed. It's very sensible of you, little Sparkle. Thanks. All right. Uh, yeah, can we... If we... we need send let's right chart now. where they are so we can uh, cross-reference them with the maps when we get back and try to figure out who we're dealing with. Is the solenoid going to work with this much energy coming around? Randus. Randus. <laughs> Uh, will we be able to get out of the way of their energy radius? You hopefully it'll like calm down. It's uh, because of all the bursts that I see this problem happened. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we may just give it some time. Try to give ourselves some distance in the meantime, perhaps. Sure. All right. The or Sarsa runs down to the. Divining pool to the communications array. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to follow Sarza. <laughs> I'll follow as well. Uh, when you guys get down there, it's already active, and you hear Pistonella's voice. She's like, hello, hello, anybody there? And uh, Sarza peeks down. She's like, oh, good, Sarza. Hi, oh, and everybody else. That's great. <laughs> Did you guys see what just happened? Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. It's all very exciting. Uh, Barrett and Pixo are already working on things. They had me call you because they can't, apparently they can't spare anybody right now. They're trying to figure out what all these new things are. Makes sense. Gods. Well, yeah, but which ones? If they figure out if any of them are very close by, that might be amenable to our cause. Let this... No, right away. Yeah, I mean, I nearby. assume we'll head back to base because we're going to need a lot of... Nearby is pretty relative with the super solenoid and uh, we're going to need time to pour over the research. Oh. While everything is going on, the super solenoid's not working. So if it's there's not anything... working. What'd you do to it? Randa said uh, there's too much energy from that. Yeah, but it'll calm down, I thought he said. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully yeah. It now that the should. initial surge... Is done. Who knows how long this initial surge is going to last? Uh, <laughs> I, Pixo knows where we're at. We're at Fire Spider Island. If he realizes one of the gods are close to us, like sailing wise, then let us know. Otherwise, we should be home as soon as possible. Okay, I'll tell him. All right. 
Does anything seem to have settled out there? Uh, there's still a lot of ambient energy, but uh, you can probably figure out a way to shield the dampen the uh, yeah, basi- <laughs> the yeah basically yeah basically or or at least uh, um conduct it away. Mm, fair enough. All right. So give me another give me another Arcana check. Mm, okay. <laughs> See if you can speed up the process. Thirty three. Again, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, you get it to where you think you can activate it without anything exploding. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Otto, want to fire yeah. it up again? Give it a go. All right. Here we go. And the thing activates, um, you know, ring of energy another ring of energy they do seem like particularly crackly and and they're glowing ex- like very brightly but they seem to be stable might be a little rough guys and you guys sail through uh, and uh yes it's not no no major problems other than the fact that uh definitely Orem and Sakar are gonna have to spend a lot of time uh, getting their hair back under control. <laughs> That's a bummer. Like those sideburns are just sticking straight out, and Gorham's hair is the frizziest it's ever been. Oh. I mean, obviously, other people that have hair have problems as well, but Randis's hair actually looks better this way. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate. He always mad wanted scientist. to look like a mad scientist. Yep. Yeah. Great, Scott. <sighs> And yep, you guys uh, make it to the other side and find yourselves just outside of Rutile Island. And uh, the captain uh, gets the ship into the dock pretty quickly. All right. So we know the name of three islands? Yes. Well, plus all of the islands of the um, Dark Council and... um, Pentatheon. Pentatheon. And a few of the random islands from Celestial Crusade that we had to go get stuff from. So you guys get to the dock. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's go see if we can, or I'm going to go at least help see if I can help with uh, the maps. Yeah, same. All right. Yeah, we might as well all just head out or head to the library unless somebody else has something else they want to do. Uh, Probably sounds as good as anything. Agreed. So yeah, everybody goes off. Uh, there's a lot of commotion. Um, the uh, on the library side, um, Barrett and her team have a lot of stuff, and they're trying to cross-reference the star colors and placement and everything. And then on the other side, Pixo and his team are trying to like establish exactly where those stars are in the like physically and and what the um actual islands would be I'm turned the, a little sparkle do you want maps or meanings maps or what meanings uh, i'll go with the i actually have no idea which one would be better i'll go with meanings all right i'll wander over to pixo okay Hey, guy. Hey. Point me to where you need help. Okay. Here's the thing. Look at that. All right. Start giving <laughs> me some numbers. All right. I will start doing what he told me to do. Okay. Give me a nature check. Oh. Sweet. I'm glad I didn't pick that one. Well, the other one's going to be religion, so we'll see. Ah. I am actually trained in nature. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Shadow. Knowledge is my only weakness. <laughs> <laughs> 31. Uh-huh. That's pretty good. Uh, yep, you definitely help speed things along. Uh, yeah, and uh, Little Sparkle can give me a uh, religion check. Hey, nice. I rolled a, uh, must have rolled really high. That's a 32. Uh, let's see. Yep, you rolled a 19. <laughs> <laughs> that is high. Little Sparkle makes herself useful. 
Oh, I'll tell you now. It's about time. Jeez. <laughs> Aww. It's, I've just paid attention like really hard when I was getting that religion briefing from Ket. Yeah, definitely Little Sparkle has been trying to um, free up some corporate espionage space in her brain mm-hmm. to make room for all the, the these and thous. She keeps, yeah. yeah. It's like Although, a closed dock with all the salamander coil NPCs, open dock with all the gods. Yep. <laughs> So it's actually literal. It is literal. There's there's a lot of (laughs) uh, research to be done. So, you know, it's not like you guys show up and like five minutes later, things are done. There's a lot of time that is spent doing this. Um, What does what does everybody do? I mean, Ken and Little Sparkle are jumping into the thick of things. Ken is enjoying himself. I'm going to be uh, basically drafting out what I think I'll need to uh, enact a plan to make a stable area for uh, circumvented time shenanigans that are about to happen. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, yeah, I, that's going to be an ongoing project. <laughs> yeah. So no rolls right now. Uh, what about uh, Orem? Uh, after he fixes his hair, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, it's an evening. No. <laughs> yes, yeah, you've got to have your I mean, priorities it's, straight. It's already it's already late when you guys got there. I mean the the meeting took a start at noon, took a long time, and you guys were kind of stuck for a little while. So it's it's already evening. Oh, uh, so by morning, Orm's ready to go. <laughs> no, I would say that uh, uh, Orm's going to try to look over some of the stuff related to the gods to see if anything pops out. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a religion check. Religion check. 27. Okay. Uh, yeah, Orem gets in there. What about Sakar? What's Sakar up to? Sakar has decided to assist with the research. Because okay. why not? Which side? Which side did you say was nature? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, astrocartography side. That side. That's the side that Sakar <laughs> is going to help with. Okay. That side. The side that All he right. has even the slightest chance of doing anything helpful. Roll me a nature check. And I got a bonus to nature check somewhere in there. I know I do. <laughs> I have a it's a thing that I can do. Yeah. That says do this thing, and then you can do this other thing, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I can do the thing," but I always forget to do the thing, and I'm not going to forget to do the thing this time. Can't find the thing. <laughs> God dang it! With a fed Dennis. Do you know the thing that I mean, Rodrigo? Um, it's something that gives you a bonus to a nature check. Yes, and it's I not th- already. Is it like a power? It's not already calculated in. I thought it was one of my cards, although it may be something that we trained it out. As a process, it? that's Kill possible. Uh, drag people over, light yourself on fire, light other people on fire, bleed other yeah. people. Almost uh, certainly, it's powers. a uh, yeah. It's probably a utility power. Checking my utility powers. I have incredible stride. Yeah, uh, I think what it is is you have. A, you probably have a uh, skill power that cares about the fact that you're trained in nature rather than actually giving you a bonus to nature. I may be thinking of Mystery of the Hidden Veil, which would actually be arcane power rather than this. Yeah, we changed that to be arcane, but that, that turns you invisible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm either misthinking about that thing or I'm thinking about something that has disappeared... So I'm just going to do my nature check, doodly bopper, I do. But I'm good at those. That's good. Yeah, because I'm I'm a natural guy. How do you feel about a 34? 34 is good. All right, so you guys work. Actually, make yourselves useful with the experts. Um, That's right. The and- jocks are helping to write stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And eventually, you guys have a um, 
pretty good, at least initial um, sort of little almanac of uh, what those stars probably mean. So if you guys uh, want to Ooh, uh, go to your handouts, oh. there should be a little tab there called Almanac. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, mm-hmm. Mount Gubliet. <laughs> yeah, anything that says carry on castle, I think we should. So uh, what I would like for you guys to do is uh, mm-hmm. you guys can decide how. But I would like for someone to read all of these out loud just so that the audience can hear them all. All <laughs> right. So looking in the almanac, the first entry is Murug. Domain decay. Holy city. The Carrion Castle. The first line in the Book of Murug. Men are faster than stone, but all things race to the loam. The symbol is a bone triangle. Shall I move on to the next one or we want to cycle it? Uh, why don't you take the first couple and then tag somebody in? Word. Uh, second entry, Uranko. Uranko? Uranko. I'm going to say Uranko. Sure. Domain is Travelers. The holy city is Waypoint. Back in the ancient days, Uranko's blessing was a guarantee of a successful voyage. Unfortunately, tracking down the fickle god in order to acquire it was usually a quest into itself. Symbol, a goose. I'm going to hand off to somebody, because I can't pronounce the next one. Go, Sam. <laughs> oh, boy. I was say uh, by Yeah, I think. Yep. By sounds right. Good. I was hoping I'd get this one because I really want to know about that symbol. So, by uh domain monsters, holy city, the screaming jungles. Research suggests that Phytanozoa did not start out as a goddess, but ascended through a huge act of violence. What exactly that action was is unclear, and her symbol is a fangly moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so like, uh, think of fangs. like a crescent moon, right? Mm-hmm. Except it's also a mouth that's full of teeth, like a it's like a sideways monster smile. Sweet. Yeah. Fangly is actually the term that we I... use to describe ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get you two will get along just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we've got uh, Ulverdon. Uh, mm-hmm. whose domain is weaponry. His holy city is the thousand hectare uh, armory. And once there was an entire pantheon of dwarven gods, greatest among them was Ulradan, the smith warrior. And his symbol is a stylized sword. And um, I'll take one more. Uh, Zorzaricha mm-hmm. uh, is the god of disease. Uh, holy city is the pools of mourning. And Zorzaricha, long-fingered one, maker of boils and inventor of fevers, spare us from your love and protect us from your touch. And uh, their symbol is six dots. And I'll tap Brian. All right. Uh, well, uh, there is Cord, whose domain is strength. Holy City is the path of peonies. Uh, Cord is one of the most well-documented slubbering gods. He has many active followers, both in the Astral Sea and in the natural world. His church remains active if scattered. Cord is known to value righteousness and heroic strength. His symbol is a closed fist. And his hair also makes a nice uh, suture to close wounds in the universe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we have Mesco, uh, whose domain is medicine. Her, her their ro- holy city is writhing nest. Mesco was a healer, trickster, and assassin. Once part of a trinity of healing goddesses, she is one the only one whose writing remains, and a symbol is a two-headed snake. Cool. Uh, we have the Bronze Prince. Uh, domain is neutrality. Hmm. Uh, Holy City is Hexagon Towers. Research suggests that there was a time when all the gods operated under a codified system of laws. In those days, all grievances were arbitrated by the Bronze Prince and symbol is Hexagon. And uh, I think I will uh, tag in uh, Rob. No. (laughs) Well, I'm reading the rest of them. (laughs) Because you won Mogubliet? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> you can we can just you can just you, you jump can... ahead and take it. Okay. And... All right. I'm going to start with the uh, the great tiger. Uh his domain is hunting. The holy city is the bleak forest. Uh great tiger was once a different god, but when he killed and ate the heart of Yasuf nine, nine heads, heads. 
a colossal tiger-like monster. He took on a tiger-like aspect. Legend says if he ever finds a quarry greater than Yasok, he will change again. His symbol is three stripes. Uh, we've got Gama, whose domain is poison. The holy city is the Toad's Boardwalk. Uh, most information pertaining to Gama comes through his vices. A gambler, a glutton. I like this guy. <laughs> and hoarder. This god almost always got his way. Uh, his symbol is a fin. A fin? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like a... Um... Like a fish's fin, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. like like Not like a shark's fin, but like the kind of ribbed like um, fin of like a bass or something. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to skip a few. Because, because <laughs> Algubliat, the greatest god ever. Uh, domains are traps and cheating. <laughs> uh, his holy city is Snap Stab. Uh, Ol Malgubliat, king of goblins, smile upon us with your jagged smile. One day, all goblin kind will cheer in unison when our bloodstained king returns. And his symbol is the lizard. And then Stephen can have the rest. All right, we have the Weeping Maiden, whose domain is sorrow. The holy city is the thrice anointed anointed prison. Uh, Even in her heyday, it was easy to downplay the Weeping Maiden as a goddess of bad poetry and weepy teenagers. In reality, though, the Maiden was always the patron of widowers, exiles, and the screaming pain of losing a child. Her symbol is I with three tears. I think that means how many people she killed in prison. (laughs) Steven. You also have Thene. The domain is learning. Uh, the holy city is the sage's rectory. The symbol is the book. Thien's holy city was once a bastion of magical and martial knowledge. Ancient texts references uh, reference it frequently, both in, as a landmark and a destination. Ooh. And oh, uh, no. finally, we have Rafaga. Yes, Rafaga. Uh, the domain is fire and volcanoes. The holy city is the burning mountain. Uh, Rafaga was always fond of scholars, or rather of the way they would scream when she would burn their works. The symbol is the volcano. Mm. And that is everybody. Nice. Oh, no. Uh, I say we stay away from any of them that have fire and burning in them. I feel like the bronze prince should be... Uh, should be a really good one, right? Yeah. Uh, and cord and Thien. Uh, yeah, if nothing uh, no, else, there. No, no. I have a feeling Thien's going to be a huge problem for us. Uh, I feel like the Bronze Prince should be our first stop. Yeah. With, mm, either the Bronze Prince or Cord, given the previous dealings. With his uh, focus on neutrality, uh, he'd probably be a good linchpin to try to swing to our side, if at all possible. Mm. Uh, almost. He's neutral. He's going to go the way Coralon is. Uh, we'll see. He doesn't want to take sides. Ah. Uh. I yeah, can't. but he was also a, the former arbitrator, so he might want to yeah. help. Mm, true. If only we could take uh, Asmodeus's to... proposal and just put the Bron Prince in that role. I was it's going to read that could. to see if it's possible yeah. that the Bronze Prince might fit the criteria more often than Asmodeus. Uh, maybe. Uh, look into that. That was my plan. Okay. Because uh, if that's the case, then... Game plan I... changes? <laughs> Game plan changes? <laughs> mm. Um... So should we then consult the map and find out where the Bronze Prince, uh, where uh, the Hexagon Towers might be? Yeah. Uh, the other god that I was actually thinking would be a good idea was now Goobliet. I mean. <laughs> how, how is that a good idea? The god because of Goobliet. Uh, now, Yuronko, uh the god of travelers. Yeah. Mm. He yeah, would but... probably see us as fairly kindred in you know, all of our adventures and we can kind of get him on he would want civilization because mm. you can only travel between different cities that's yeah. not true you can travel it's, the wilderness just fine yeah getting their favor may be a good hard thing to have i do have some familiarity with the teachings of court as well i mean we have a number of options but i i think that the concept of the Bronze Prince possibly being our first stop seems wise. Bronze Prince seems like a good idea. Cord uh, seems fine as long as he's uh, not too vain. Barrett, do you have any input on this, or, or for that matter, Sarza? Barrett uh, strokes her chin. Uh, 
we can we're going to keep doing research on uh, you know personalities and uh, I suppose things they like and things they dislike. Um, I would say uh, definitely think about Gamma because this is a god that is at least somewhat well documented to have many vices and uh, creatures with vices can be manipulated. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I would also um, I guess I would say don't necessarily shy away from gods that seem to have uh, unpleasant domains just because they uh, just because their domains seem scary or dangerous does not necessarily mean that they are and by comparison, just because a domain seems safe doesn't necessarily mean that the god attached to it is um, going is to going to it. yeah. Fair. Mm. Tiamat did a lie her, herself with uh, the uh, Rastal on this one, as opposed to you know mm. Coralon who walked away and ruined everything, mm-hmm. or the Huntress who aligned with Asmodeus. Yeah, I mean, we kind of knew that was going to happen, though. All right, well, let's get some rest and decided in the morning. Okay. Are we at least agreed that we are probably going to have to deal with all of these in some way or another? Yes. All right, Uh, so it's just a matter of order. Yeah. All right, you guys go and get some rest. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the plan. Uh All right. Um, and by rest, Ket means he's going to be weighing the options all night long. It's, okay. That's what he does. Hidden the books? Not necessarily the books, just we've got known information now, so I can actually weigh it and figure out yeah. what our best options are. Uh, see if how far Pixel gets on a map of each of these. and you know, Yeah, so actually, that... The, uh, yeah, Pixos has Pixo has the all of these already mapped out by the time you guys are done with that initial discussion. That was okay. basically what you guys were doing cuz you know, it's there's no like research that really needs to be done for that. It's actually just like using instruments to figure out what that True. star and where that island is reflecting. So, their actual locations is actually something that you guys have. And it kind of doesn't matter what their locations are relative to each other because we have the solenoid. Yep, that's right. At least right now, it really doesn't matter. You guys can basically go wherever you want. So um, yeah, it also just it also appears that got. the background radiation is now low enough that uh, the solenoid should work just fine. All right, that's good. After his four hours of meditation, Orm will wander outside and look at the new stars. <laughs> they are bright. Very bright. Mm-hmm. I look to see if there are any more that appear. Uh, nope, just those 14 mm. so far anyway. Mm. Yeah, I'll just hang out, stare, until okay. everyone else wakes up. Uh, or I'm hear some shouting from a uh, nearby barracks. I will walk over to find out what the commotion is. Okay. Uh Orem can aid in dispatching several glowing spiders. Oh, great. <laughs> stomp, stomp, beat, beat, blasty, blasty. So eventually the rest of the crew wakes up. <laughs> uh, seems like we didn't get all the spiders. Mm. All right, we'll keep it. Oh, that's out. terrible. Oh. Uh... We'll so, to let the crew know. Did anyone uh, contemplate anything while they were sleeping? Sleeping. <laughs> That's the only way to get the the the, the best energy for the new day, cat. Yeah. <laughs> it's always so cute when you talk about things you have no firsthand knowledge of. Well, you sleep. I meditate. When I meditate, <clears throat> I get energy for the new day. Mm. I, I'm guessing you probably didn't, considering your your grumpiness this morning. <laughs> it is somewhat overwhelming. Mm. Yes, looking back up at the sky. Yeah, it is. So, uh, should we make plans for the Bronze Prince? 
Yeah, I still like that. Um, actually, we should probably start making arrangements here, come up with a priority list for research, espionage, etc. Mm. I agree. I think starting with neutrality, even if there's no one side or the other for him to choose, would at least give us some sort of footing to see what we could possibly even expect from these creatures. The other alternative is maybe Thene, because if if she still has that library, we mm-hmm. might be able to get some information from her about her peers. Exactly. <laughs> And what? Once I thought you again, like libraries. I still think we can't underestimate any interactions that you may have had with Cord previously. As long as they weren't the type where he's going to awaken and immediately want to kill you. Uh, how particular is he about his hair? <sighs> mm. I, I'm I'm fine with visiting Cord. Yeah. Cord seems okay. I'm worried about uh what we did for Vecna. What did you do for Vecna? Oh, destroyed that important book. Yeah. Yeah, well, Thien doesn't have to know about that. Do we even know what the book was? No, which is amazing to me. Uh, I would have defeated the purpose. (laughs) Honestly, we've made worse decisions as a group. I can't blame them too much. So far... I have six Mm -hmm. that are good options, I believe. I don't Uh, know about the rest of you, but I feel a certain kinship with Great Tiger. Uh, I thought you might. I'll uh, put him up there. I do not feel any kinship with Great Tiger. (laughs) Uh, I know the Bronze Prince, we're all agreed that he seems like a good starting point. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think Yoranko is a good idea. Uh, having more cities means more points to travel to necessarily. And I think with our, especially our most recent adventures, he would be very interested in us at least. Mm. But I mean, the text explicitly states that finding Yoranko is a difficult task in itself. He's right here. Yeah, second star. According right, to straight on to morning. Yeah, no, I mean, his like, city is there. City yeah, is exactly. City. That doesn't city mean that there. he was there when he fell asleep, or that he'll wake up there. Either way, yeah, it's it's someone that we can put in the the operation. Uh, I think Ulradon and Brandis can talk. Sure. I mean, I think I could talk with Mesco. That was. Uh, another one on my list was Mesco, because uh, you and Randis would both be able to talk to him. Yep, for, and I think uh, for... we could probably work something out with Goma. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Cord seems like a better sooner rather than later. Agreed. Well, which order and have you prioritized these in, Kat? Uh Currently, I have the Prince, Yuranko, mm-hmm. Oradon, Gama, Mesco, and Cord. So are you uh, considering uh, splitting up? No. There's no way we can do it. We've only got one ship that That's can true. travel. Yeah, it, it would be difficult. I think it would also be unwise. And I think that while I understand the point of each of us perhaps having a kinship or a tie to a, a given domain or a given god, I think the idea of one of us speaking for all of us is extraordinarily dangerous. And I mean that even as if I'm the one doing the speaking. I think that we need to make sure that we represent ourselves as a coalition representing a coalition rather than trying to appeal specifically to someone's particular domain or their particular domain, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The other consideration we may need to make Mm -hmm. is ultimately seeing if Tiamat is still going to side with this uh, as well as Melora though I believe she's far more reliable than Tiamat uh, and to see if we could maybe argue with some of the others either those that the, the three that abstained or mm-hmm. the other two that 
agreed with Asmodeus. Do we still have a copy of the proposals? Yep. We so have like are those proposals copies. are those proposals definitely off the table though? Yeah, I don't know. Uh Rathus's statement was she wanted to get other gods to agree with her proposal, was it not? Yeah. Okay. And the proposals can change at this point. It's just a like a, a show of good faith towards it is is what they need to kind of start negotiations again. So there are were nine active. Mm-hmm. There are now fourteen additional for a total of twenty three. Is that correct? Currently. Which means that. Uh, depending on abstention and people changing their minds, we may need to get as many as a dozen or more. Or we reduce their number. <laughs> uh, and how would you recommend we do that? Well, we do uh, have a handy-dandy tool for the job. Tool mm. explicitly to do that. And we still don't know which god that tool is supposed to be aimed at, do we? I don't think it really matters. We're told to aim it at anyone in particular, just a god. So another something to prioritize. Did you guys figure out if it could be used more than once? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it probably can be. And or how to redirect power. That we're working not, on. Not so much. Okay. Which also brings up the question of how does that particular player fit into this power struggle, if at all? That's my concern. I mean, it or they or whatever <laughs> seemingly is of the same power level as this. Does that put a 24th? God uh, in the field. Not, not in this uh, re- reality. No, I, I don't uh, think that's a. Yeah, so as long as he's off Vertus, I would think that he's basically abstaining, considering I would assume we don't have to appeal to any divine beings on all the other vertices. Yeah, I don't think he's mm. even in consideration or even. Yeah. However, should power transfer to him, as we've seen with the uh, Obsidian Huntress, perhaps mm-hmm. those bona fides go with. Uh, with the transfer of power and gives uh, the thing that chatters the sky a seat at the table. Exactly. So which find a way over here, which that would be... It's kind of the opposite of what happened. She transferred power to me and still had enough to be at the seat at the table. So, while we're prioritizing who to speak to and who to speak to first, we probably also have to prioritize... Should it come to that, who do we kill? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's really necessary to prioritize right now. We don't know nearly enough. I think the priorities are who we're going to go see, who we want to have being researched, and who we want to have being spied on. Mm. I'd say spy on everyone that we can. But <laughs> yeah, well. We only got that's... so many. Um, that's good, good. This is exactly what I hate about court. <laughs> Agreed. Should we, instead of standing around and potentially wasting more time, start p- planning to get to the Bronze Prince as quickly as possible? Uh, I... I think we should check in with our, say, uh, allies here uh, mm-hmm. before we leave. Talk to them about kind of projects we'd like them working on while we are gone. So I, I'd like to go check in with uh, Salath. See, give him the list if he, I assume he's actually already got his hands on it, but see if he's got any ideas for priority targets and uh, get him working on that. And I feel like uh, Barrett should also have like a well, research we well, focus. We might as well make a visit to each of them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's go visit, uh, let's go visit uh, Spymaster Salath. Okay. You-, you got a uh, Salath's tower? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, he's in there talking to some ninjas. <laughs> he, like, scatters them. <laughs> hey, have you seen the report of who's awake? Yes. Uh, I was wondering if you 
had a game plan for gathering intelligence on them. Mm, it's going to take us a little while. We don't have any active uh, um, players in any of those cities, so it's going to have to be slow going. I can offer you, though, a little bit of information on the currently active players or the um, the uh, the ones that have been awake so far. That's great. Um, well, first off, the bad news, uh, um, Drakistan has all but fallen in the onslaught. Um, it is not necessarily a, an extremely valuable, uh, target, but it is uh, valuable in the hearts and minds of people. It is the, uh, unassailable fortress, um, There are still parts of it that are being fought over, but the fact that it's been breached is enough to to concern the right people and dishearten the right people. So that is something that you'll all have to consider. Additionally, I did see that uh, there was some chatter about Corillon turning on some of his allies. Yeah. So uh, the reason for that may be that um, there is this um, rumor that Asmodeus has a research team that a lot of the new magics and ships and things that he has have come from this secluded group of magicians and scientists. And it's possible that Coralon is trying to maneuver a group to take them out. Hmm. Why, Essentially. Oh, go ahead. Why oppose his allies? Why not do that with their backing once a new treaty was signed? Because the treaty might not allow exactly what uh, he wants them to do. Interesting. Yeah. It's entirely possible that, uh, Despite the fact that he would have had his allies help, he's decided to do things his own way. And in the process, cause a lot more problems, maybe even for himself. But that's not for me to figure out. All I know is that we have always heard chatter of Corallon having um, covert priests. Um, it's certainly not the... Uh, Certainly not the image that they put out, but we know for a fact that Bahamut had them. We know that Arathis has them. Uh, so assuming that Corallon has Avengers under his command is a perfectly reasonable uh, assumption. And so they are likely going to be trying to figure out uh, what uh, Asmodeus's, uh team is trying to figure out or what new technologies they have available. If you are able to get that information, that could be a powerful bargaining chip. Certainly. Uh, Do you have any leads on where or who might know information about this uh, team or facility? Too many right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Asmodeus's organization is very good at flooding the... um, or or creating false information. So it's difficult to sort it out. Certainly um, committing a spy or a team to a mission that has always been a red herring or even a trap can be very risky. So we have to move uh, very carefully. Um, Makes sense. Additionally, uh, both Grumsh and Tiamat have no love lost lost for uh, Asmodeus. So um, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you try to get them on your side, but always keep an eye out for where their um, where their um, interests align with yours. Because those two are very can be very fickle, and so they might do something that benefits you and even harms them and somebody else in the process. So always keep an eye out for that. Um, It is very likely that you 
are going to find agents of other gods in your travels. So always keep in mind their godly policies. Um, but also keep in mind that uh, gods are creatures of passion and policy, but people aren't. So any individual priest could be convinced or become a huge hindrance just because of their personality. All right. Well, it sounds like your team has a, a lot to keep busy. Yes, we're trying our best, but definitely for the next couple of days at least, we're going to mostly be trying to figure out what we should be looking at. Okay. Well, good luck. I Thank think you. we're going to try to go encounter one of these gods or visit one of these cities. Mm. Well, certainly be careful. Certainly. I'm gonna scribble down the list of the six we've discussed so far and hand it to Tala. These are the ones that we're currently considering right away. Is this in order? Mostly. Um, mm. The first couple are definitely in order. The rest are subject to change based on further information. Well, here's the here's the main advice I would give you just looking at this list. Nothing beats an introduction. If you already know someone, there is no reason to put that off. Mm. All right. So cord then? <laughs> that would be my advice to you is get that handshake as quickly as possible. Okay. All right. You guys and... leave the tower? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And we'll go visit, um, let's go visit the uh, theologian, Barrett. Okay. Barrett looks like she's been up all night. Barrett, Probably you look tired. Uh, yeah, it's been a long night. Have Just you... trying to get more information for you. Sure. And what have, what have you found? Well, unfortunately, nothing too solid. Um, if anything, it's just mostly more leads to track down. Is there something specific that you're looking for? Uh, I'll scribble down the list again, putting cord at the top this time. Okay. Um, these are the six that we are currently considering right away. Uh, in a general order of what our consideration is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, hmm. well, I can tell you this. Oridan is a god of community, so being part of a community would be very interesting to him, regardless of what that is. Um, and unless you have clearly defined sides, I think the Bronze Prince might be a wild goose chase. If there's nothing to, if there are too many sides, it's hard to be neutral. Mm. So we should go to him once things are more firmed up. That would be my advice. Uh, lastly, of course, it's hard to track down Aranko. He might not be in a city. Yeah, we gathered that. All right, I think we're going to hit Cord first, and we'll kind of consider based on intelligence and anything you gather on. By the time we get back, who's next? Just remember, Cord is a passionate god. He does not think about things necessarily with logic. So, uh, actually, that's true of a lot of uh, our current uh, pantheon. Um, they all have things they want, and they all have things they like, and they are very likely to prioritize those over even self-preservation. So keep that in mind when speaking to him. The greater good is something that Cord cares about, but mostly a name. Very All good right. to know. Well, I'll keep you. trying to find. Yeah, I'll keep trying to find more information for you. Although maybe I'll take a quick nap. Yes, I think you should. That looks like a good plan. Uh, let's go visit the armory. Uh, okay. To the armory. All right, you guys get to the armory. There is Zardin Banny. Hey. Well, hello. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, gearing up to uh, head out. Uh, 
just thought if you uh, we'd check around and see if you had any last minute advice or uh yeah my last minute advice is to check your gear grab some of that residuum that we got you and make some new stuff <laughs> good call if you need anything yeah so guys if uh there's any particular ideas or if you all think that there's uh perhaps something we need I don't know maybe things that can resist fire or poison <laughs> considering some of the gods we're going to be dealing with yeah that's a good call mm-hmm is there any possibility to upgrade our existing weapons? Yeah, I mean, I can do that. Seems like that might be prudent. I'll have to see. Uh, yeah, uh, I can definitely... You know, let's grab some of this residuum and uh, I'll start uh, thinking on <laughs> what we want to do with it. My sword has a plus four sticker. Can you make one that says plus six? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't I go that high. No. Don't think I could do five. I'm checking. Bet you could. I have faith in you, Warden Duther. <laughs> do you still have that feat that lets uh, that gives you like two levels on that? No, I don't. You just trained it. Yeah, some time ago. Because for the longest time, we were far more limited by our resources than we were by levels. Well, something to consider. Yeah. Then again, now with uh, inherent bonuses, it's less drastic to, you know, yeah. have to like constantly upgrade everybody's next lot items. Mm-hmm. Yeah. More about coming up with interesting little artifacts that would actually. Uh... Powers or bonuses that we can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. You guys might want to have a look at some wondrous items because those aren't tied to your slots and mm-hmm. you might find some stuff in there that you actually want or need. And also, if anybody has any open slots, mm-hmm. you also might want to consider uh, Ooh, having Randos make I you got something. Like, I got open rings. Hands. I got one. <laughs> oh, wait. I have a ring on. Shoot. You can yeah. have two rings. Yeah. Oh, well, it says I have a hand slot that's completely empty. Huh? Yeah, yeah, hand is like gloves. Can I have some gloves <laughs> to go over my okay. rings? I think we could all use another ring because I think we all have just the one yep. that we got from the uh, dream. At quills. least one of, I want to say at least one of you has two rings. Mm-hmm. That would be Sakar. Yep, Sakar has two rings. Sakar has actually several rings, but only two that are magical and meaningful. Yeah. What? So that's that's definitely something to consider. Assuming that you guys, uh, like, unless you are like out the door right now, if you wanted to spend some time. Thinking about your gear. Uh, definitely before you bust out on your first mission is probably the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I think after speaking with the spy master, maybe our thought of get out there and run and run and run like constipated wiener dogs may not be the best first option. <laughs> Rarely is. Mm-hmm. What are your two rings, Matthew? Uh, I have a ring of shadow guard and a ring of the dragonborn emperor. Oh, okay. Also a big red one. Guess guess what I was looking at for you. Was it the Dragonborn Dragon Emperor? Emperor? It was the Dragonborn Emperor. Yep. Yeah. I've had a Dragonborn Emperor since the beginning of this game. Mm-hmm. It's not the mm. same ring. Or is it? <gasps> no, it's not. Um, are there like gloves of uh, God Punch a Caton? Or... <laughs> You know, like uh, there's probably gloves of punchicating. Well, I don't necessarily punchicate. I tend to slash with swordlecaters. Um, mm-hmm. well, well, there's probably gloves of slashlecating then. But is there a way for a glove to you know boost something and give us like magical things? I should probably look and see if there are gloves. Well, we could just like spend all of the residuum and just make two wondrous level twenty items. Let's do that nice. <laughs> and make them my gloves. <laughs> And then I shall have wondrous gloves of wonder. So we have two hundred and fifty thousand, or is wondrous items way less? Yeah, we were uh, provided with two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Did we have any other left over? Or? Uh, just probably whatever we 
add person. Yeah, whatever Orem has. And I always thought that Orem was carrying a respectable amount. Shh. I don't like telling everybody what I have. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, well, residual maybe. I'd have to go back and look. But um, if you're talking about money, standard. Orb does not have a lot of money. No, I meant in terms of, I thought we still had residual. big hunks of effluvium. Um, effluvium, no. Yeah, I'd need to take some time to actually look over books, which is probably best done off air. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, in the meantime, how about we go and visit our cartographer, Crystal Ball is fine. Okay. And see what he has up his sleeve. A map. He may have more than that. He's a cartographer. It's definitely a map. Oh, but he may have more than just a map. He may have two maps. Yep. So you guys go see Pixo? Yes. Yep. Okay. Show up. Pixo's like, hey, I made you two maps. Hey, thank you. And what is on these maps? Uh, They're maps of the Astral Sea with uh, new stuff on them. Cool. We're also working on uh, orbits and things like that. Mm. But uh, that's slow going. And it doesn't look like any of these are moving too fast. So... If you follow the charts, um, you should be able to get to any of them. Do any of these uh, cross their orbital paths with one another? Uh, Some of them should, but they're not crossing right now. None of them are too close together. Okay, good. One thing you guys probably do have to worry about while you're out there is star storms, though. Uh, Star storms? Yeah, you know, star storms. No, I don't. It's when, like, there's all this energy and all these storms... Or all of these like glowing stars crash into the astral sea and they make like a big hurricane like thing and they like turn ships into dust and roil up the seas. Okay, good to know. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, energy going around. So um, star storms are probably going to be a big deal. And then some of these places. Um, there was, there's probably a burst of godly energy. So, who knows how that has affected the surrounding areas? Hmm. Some places were probably just absorbed into the astral sea, but I don't know if there's like a weird, uh, I don't know, a beetle god. There might be some like rocks that got turned into giant beetles, or beetles that got turned into giant rocks, hmm. or, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You have to be careful about ambient uh, astral energies, especially as you approach these cities. Okay. Hmm. And beetles. Fun. Yes. I mean, beetles was just an example. Is there a beetle guy? Not no. to not our knowledge. Far, but not yet. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hundreds of gods, probably, eventually. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Or was it hundreds of candidates and only a few would awaken? We don't know. Well, it I don't was... envy you. <laughs> yep. Anything else that you might uh, advise us of before we set out? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I'll be keeping an eye on the on the water here. So if you need to ask me something, I'll be around. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Good you luck. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks. You too. you too. Now let's go visit Sarsa. Okay. I don't, don't know that I trust Sarsa. Well, she seems to be the one in charge here, so. She oh, has an agenda. Trust her. I'm sure she but, does. Yeah, I think for now our agendas align pretty well. All right. Sarsa is in her office. Knock on the door. Come in. Ah, Sarsa. Hello. Uh, we've been going over this uh, list of gods, and I think uh, Ket has um, has some things he'd like to share. All right. All right. I'll scribble down the list uh, of, now, five gods. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cord at the top and hand it over to her. These are the ones that we're looking at. Cord is currently our top prospect of going to. Uh your insight would be appreciated. Well, you have a relationship with Cord, right? 
Yes. I'll point to Orem. <laughs> yes. Well, that's definitely a place to start. Um, let me see here. Uh, I mean, this looks fine. Uh, I, I suppose my, my biggest piece of advice here is that this least list will almost certainly change the moment that you do meet a deity. And mm-hmm. you have to be aware of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's why it's a short list. None of our plans ever survives contact with us. Is there anyone on the list that you think we should avoid? Or is there someone you think we should add to the list? I think that you shouldn't um, you shouldn't overlook the Weeping Maiden. I think she's a very powerful deity, and yeah. it doesn't seem like it, but sadness is a very powerful driving force, and mm. so her portfolio could actually be very large, and um, she may be a stronger actor um, if if what you're trying to do is is gather clout as it were does that make sense yeah. sure yes mm-hmm. um that said i literally had never heard of her before this all came up so i can't tell you whether that is a um whether she would be amenable to it or dangerous or anything like that i just know that from what i know of studying uh godly portfolios Sadness would be a very strong and powerful one in a way that something like poison wouldn't necessarily be mm-hmm. because Makes sense. not everything uses poison or has been poisoned, but every sentient creature gets sad. Mm. Mm-hmm. You might also consider gods that uh, we already know have multiple portfolios like Malgubliet. Yes. <laughs> it was Rob you Nuthead. just like the name. I, I think like he likes goblins. the goblins. I was going to serve up the traitors of Randus's kingdom to the goblins if we hadn't been saved by the druid dude. That's messed up. They were traitors. They tried to kill the king and the pregnant queen. Yeah, well, mm. they were being mind controlled, so. Yeah. Only some of them. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> So I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> so that Goblin's obviously that goes for uh, Rafaga as well. Her, she actually has many port, like a, a very broad portfolio because she has fire and volcanoes and lava and things like that. So even though those are all small, discrete ones together, they make for a much larger uh, amount of power and, and influence. Makes sense. Should we assume that they all know each other and that they know the Pentathian and the Dark Council? Yes, you should assume that they all have some knowledge of each other. Although, right. almost certainly, that knowledge will be outdated. Uh, that's actually a good point and one that I hadn't considered. Uh, they might receive you just for news on what has been happening, especially if you portray yourselves as people in the know. Uh, you might get an audience simply because somebody wants to know what's up with Tiamat nowadays. <laughs> Information we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, people in the know is actually a defining characteristic of us for a change. No, we should view that as currency then. When we depart, are you going to stay here or would you like to come with us? I think... At least for the time being, I should stay here. There's a lot of information coming into the camp. Uh, uh, China or uh, being processed in the camp. So I would like to help. Uh, Salath is working overtime as is Barrett and Pixo. So I really uh, want to be here to manage that. Uh, as much as I would like to provide backup for you, um, I think you can all handle yourselves. Uh, Very well, then. Uh, We will be departing um, soon-ish, so uh, I think we need to have the the ship prepared and ready to be supplied and and take off when we're ready to go. Well, make sure you speak to Pistonella. I think she's made some adjustments as well. Ah, okay. Very good. Thank you. And we leave.
and go find Pistonella. All right. You are pointed to the dock where Pistonella is working on the ship. Okay. You're on the ship. Ah, Pistonella. Oh, hey, guys. Hey, um, we are going to be departing very soon, and we wanted to make sure that the ship was ready and in good shape and stocked for our voyage. Yeah, the ship is ready to go, and I heard that you guys had some problems uh, getting off the ship, so I made uh, uh, what I like to call a super transit buoy. Oh? Uh, It attaches to the ship, and it'll allow you to disembark even if there is no dock. Ah, that's great. Excellent. It yeah. does take up a little bit of space, of uh, a fair amount of space in the cargo hold, but unless you're planning on loading a bunch of oxen or you know, a couple tons of gold, you should be okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind loading a couple tons of gold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, we're just going to uh, get our gear, and uh, we'll be ready to go soon. All right. Make sure you uh, tell the dock master so that the captain and the crew are ready to go when you are. All right. As we get off the ship, I'll find the dock master and relay okay. the information. Hello, I am the dock master. <laughs> Bernie! <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> Hello. He has a is a human. He has a fantabulous mustache. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we're going to be gathering up our gear and we will need to depart probably within the next couple of hours. Very well, I shall gather the crew <laughs> post haste. Orm just stares at this guy. I okay. Like Thank you. Um, we'll be back soon. I oh, love the mustache. You. Oh, thank you, thank you. I love your hair. It's positively gleaming in oh, the new starlight. Thank you. I hand him a little vial of something. <laughs> Use this twice a day. <laughs> oh. Well, I think I just might. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how many people have you given grooming products to over the years, Orem? A very select few. <laughs> Seventeen. Well, that's Maybe half a dozen? No. I, half a dozen seems uh, quite a bit. I would say, I would say five? half a dozen is yeah, probably five yeah. or six. Yeah, yeah, five or six seems about right. There yeah. is a, um, there is a uh, fighter from the seven clans just on like a complete upward rocket ride, just based on uh, how silky his hair is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we should probably take a break here. Uh, I know it's been exciting seeing our list grow and change and grow and change and change and get reordered again. And uh, I think by next week we will have this figured out. No, we won't. Maybe we will have some new gear. Hmm, You're just going to have to tune in and find out. In the meantime, if you have questions, comments, etc., send them to podcast at majorspoilers.com. And until next time, here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2018 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.